I'm Calvin Rogers, and here in Nashville, Tennessee, hanging out at Paragon Studios, working with TuneTrack. We're composing and compiling a gospel drum library for the TuneTrack uh, software. I was quite honored when Calvin called me, and he thought uh, enough of the, the drum sounds that we'd gotten over the years from working together that it should be included in a library like this. I think that uh, gospel musicians, gospel drummers, uh, we occupy a lot of space in music, period, not just gospel music. So I think that our sound is one of the things that uh, we're pretty well known for. Um, I also, I felt like this sound and this particular style of drumming, the tone of these drums, the way we approach the drums dynamically, I felt like that was, there was a little bit of uh, a need for this kind of project, this particular kind of library. The gospel drum kits or the gospel sound, they reach a lot of different genres, but I think it's a really important genre to have. You know, the roots of, of real gospel drumming is actually like the absence of drumming because in the church back in the day, there was no drums. It was foot stomping and hand clapping. That was the heartbeat of the music. I and mean, it was big. It would capture you, you know? And so when they incorporated drums, I think it had to be, had to be the same kind of way. Man, if you are recording a gospel drum library, Calvin is like by far the first person that's gonna come to your mind. Calvin Rogers, he has defined a, a lot of, especially modern gospel drumming. What def is defined today as gospel music, you know, it's the kit is a lot of times really in your face. Punchy drum kits uh, that are tight uh, sounding drum kits, not necessarily roomy drum kits. The snares are usually tuned a, a bit higher than they would be for, let's say, a rock kit, especially when it comes to modern gospel music. So when I got called about doing the drum library project, and we were considering studios. Paragon, this is actually the first studio that came to my mind. I've recorded a few uh, albums here. Uh, always loved the tone of these, of this studio. The board is great here. The room really, really uh, responds to the drums well. And uh, true to form, just like it's always been every time I've come here, the drums just sounded excellent. So I, I love this place. I, I come here every day if I could. We tried to capture as much as we could out of this room so that the end user can it can create just about any sound and space that they that they want. It's exactly what we needed to be able to capture all of the different sounds we were looking for. My role within, in this library, or building this library, was to work with the other guys here at TuneTrack in collaborating and defining exactly what the sound of a gospel library would be. What the drums would sound like, how big, how small, how tight, uh, how much resonance, how little resonance. It'll be different, but it'll be a little bit drier, but the, that kit should be big yeah, it should be fat. Real. It should be real. And the best drums I've ever recorded have always been in Nashville. And you know what? Most of the albums that I've played on, what I really, 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 absolutely, 100% love the way my drums sound, or the albums I favor most, there's a common denominator there. It was Danny Duncan. When I'm recording a project, 
especially a gospel project, the very first thing I start getting sounds on and think about are the drums. Uh, it's such an instrument that defines where we're going and where the song will be heading. I do tend to EQ a lot because we, we have a lot of, of, of microphones on each of these drum kits. I, I like for each microphone to not just be a mirror image or another version of that sound. I like for every microphone that we record to have a, a specific purpose. This is typically my setup uh, for most of the contemporary gospel music I play. These drums are the perfect blend of maple and birch, which are, are probably my favorite woods uh, for drums. And we've got different blends of snare drums. Right now I've got the uh, 20 ply snare drum in a six and a half by 14, as well as uh, the beaded bronze five by 14 over on this side. And we've got plenty more snare drums. Uh, we wanted to bring this directly to you, wanted you to feel and hear these drums in the same way that you do when you listen to them on record. On this particular kit, we wanted to do something a little bit more traditional. We went way, way, way vintage. We got us a 1940s kit, just full of beef and weight, great tone. Uh, we've got a 24 inch kick drum, 24 by 14, uh, 13 by nine, and a 16 by 16. These drums feel great. The toms are super round, super full. Got a lot of attack, but still with a lot of weight to it. These drums are gonna blow you away. Uh, this particular kit we got in front of you today is a gem. It's a rare gem, as a matter of fact. When I heard these drums initially and we had that open, round, just full, overtony, very resonant tone, it almost immediately reminded me of Motown. So, of course, we went for that. We threw some Remo Black Dots heads on there and um, started hitting the toms and kicking the bass drum. But then we also wanted to go for a different sound. We chose to say, what if, what if we did this? So we taped the drums up, threw some paper tiles on them, some lots of duct tape, and muted the drums up and got this very old school, rich, dry soul thing happening with this drum kit. So blend these all together and you just got the perfect gumbo of the best drum uh, configuration and sound and plenty of options that probably anyone could come up with. I think to bring it home, to sum it all up, what this experience was like was, uh, it was enlightening. I gathered a very, very strong appreciation for what Tune Track does. Uh, they were very, very tedious about how much work went into every single part. We had the luxury of time. We got to spend time really tweaking in every detail of every drum in this kit. The drums just sounded excellent. Uh, better than I've ever heard them because uh, I got to fill up the whole room. Everything in this studio was dedicated to capturing drum sounds. There were days we didn't record a single thing. All we did was we spent time getting sounds. That's not something that you ever have the luxury of doing on sessions. It made a huge difference in the final product. Man, it got scary at one point because after I hit the drums and we got the samples, when the groove started playing, I was just like, that's my hand on my cymbal. That's my snare drum, that's me, that's my stroke. It was like being in the twilight zone almost, you know, cause these are my sounds and they wanna make sure that they give the user every single option. And I can only appreciate that. Uh, I think that if you're gonna put a drummer in the box, it should feel like this drummer is sitting right there in a the room with you. That's exactly what TuneTrack did.